Yeah. Where did Desert Storm take place? Where in Saudi? Or Saudi where? Arabia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that before 9-11 and all that? or? It was. Um, yeah, it was in 1991, Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. So I'd actually, the funny, you mentioned that, it's like I had been in the Army for 10 years. I joined in 1989, got out in 1999. And my, I had, you know, three young children. And my mom, I remember my mom, when I was telling her I was getting out, she thought I was crazy to get out because the military, you know, being, you know, took care of our health and everything and, you know, having young kids and not having anything to go to to go out into the world. She thought I was crazy, but... I felt in my spirit, and I just knew another war was coming, and I would have definitely have been back over there again, you know, no doubt if I'd stayed in, so. Yeah. How does it feel to use a feeding tube? Is it good, or is it okay, or bad? Well, it has benefits, definitely, you know, because I can eat healthy. I, I make my own meals and blend them up, and so everything I eat is healthy. So I don't have to worry about unhealthy things, and I don't have to worry about the taste. So it's kind of a blessing. I, I can eat really good, healthy stuff that I wouldn't normally eat because I may not like the taste of it, but I don't taste it, so that's a good thing. Obviously, it has its challenges, you know, kind of like when you're on a diet and you have those temptations and you really want to eat something else, you know. That's the negative part. The other negative part is there are so many things that revolve around food and gatherings with people and going out to dinner. So it's, you know, um, that can be a disadvantage, but I'll still go and just sit there, but it makes the other person more uncomfortable than it does me. You know, even though at times I do battle, battle with it, but I've been battling with it for so long now it's gotten easier for me. Ah, okay. Fire away, Brendan. And what's if, like, when you go out and everything with um your family and all that, what's your favorite, apart from golf, what's your favorite thing to do? Well, my husband and I love traveling. We have an RV that we bought, and we like to travel during the summer. We get out of Arizona for the summer months. Um, but, yeah, traveling. And we like camping. We love to camp. But no, we I... anything outdoors. We like walk. You know, my husband and I walk um, about 10,000 steps every day. Oh, wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, Brendan? Uh, when did you uh, think of going into joining the military? Oh. Um, what started? Uh. Okay, well, it's a bad story, <laughs> but I was doing drugs at the time, and I honestly did too much one night, and I thought I was going to have a heart attack and die, and I called out to God, and I said, God, if you let me survive tonight, I'll change, and the next day, I ended up deciding to join the Army, so... Pretty cool. Good to hear. So what do you do to help share your faith with others? Oh, I, I share constantly, openly on Facebook. I'll share my faith. I'll um, I put posts. I try to go live as often as I can. But yeah, anyone I'm talking to, I share my faith with them. I'm very open with my faith, yeah. Do you, are you involved in any charity acts or something? Not yet. I'm looking at building a business so that I can be more involved in charity. Absolutely. So, Yeah, pretty cool. Have any final questions, Brendan? And, yeah, what, oh, when, when did you, you know, like, um, join the church and 
Whereabouts is your church that you go to? I've been, well, I joined, I started going to church when I was in the military. So it was in, um, right before I got out of the army. So it was in 1998 is when, well, I grew up, let me start back. I grew up Catholic, going to a Catholic church all my life. I even went to Catholic high school, but I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. I just knew who he was. It was when I was in the army that my friend had, my neighbor had been reading her Bible. And as a Catholic, I'd never even really read the Bible. I just had this beautiful Bible on my my table. But I was like just drawn to her because she just knew where things were in the Bible. And it was just, you know, kind of like drew me in. And my husband and I at that time, you know, we were in the service and we were, you know, with three young kids, we were struggling financially and had some other things going on. So I just, I don't know, there's something, I was looking for for something and I knew my husband did not grow up going to church. And I wanted, at that point, we had not been going to church and I wanted to start going back to church, but I knew he didn't want to go to Catholic church. <clears throat> so my friend invited me to her church. Um, but before that, she was telling me about being drunk in the Holy Spirit, which as a Catholic, I'm like, this woman's crazy. <clears throat> and so when I told my husband I was going to church with her, he's like, good luck. <laughs> but the, the moment I went there and they had me praying and then I walked up to the altar for an altar call, which I've never even knew what that was. It, taking that first step up there felt like heavy bricks on my legs. But once I took that first step, I felt like I was carried to the front. And when she came and the pastor, there's like five people up there. And when they came to me, they said, Jesus loves you. And then they said it again. And it's like when they said it again, it's like they reached down into my soul. And I just started blubbering uncontrollably like a child. It was just, I couldn't, you know, and I, I, at that time, I was this top army girl that never cried. So for me to cry and control me like that was just the strangest thing. Um, my husband, when I got home, and during the next week, he saw something had changed in me. And so he came to church with me the following week. And since then, we've been going to church, to a non-denominational church now. Um the church that we're a part of now is here in Surprise, which is called The Gathering. And we just love that one it's so much. We're just so close to everyone there. So I hope that answers. What was that? I said, I hope that answers your question. Yes, definitely. <laughs> it definitely does. So, yeah, that's all we have for now. But we thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. No Lauren. problem. And you too, Brendan. You did pretty good in this. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So where can people find you, Lauren? Um, right now, I'm just on Facebook. So I haven't really ventured out. I'm, I'll probably be going on to TikTok a little bit here and there, but mainly Facebook. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. And we wish you luck in that and with your journey with the veterans and all that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Brendan, take us out. We'd like to thank Lauren for coming on to the show and thank you, Doug, for being an awesome co-host as well. So th thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time on Relentless and Unstoppable. <laughs>